The speed of light is about 299,792,458 meters per second. This value is quite accurate, isn't it? But how have we determined it? According to the calculation by Al Romer, the speed of light is about 220,000 kilometers per second. Half a century later, in 1728, James Bradley discovered stellar aberration and confirmed the finiteness of the speed of light. The value obtained by Bradley's was 308,000 km per second. The most accurate measurement of the speed of light was carried out in 1975 based on a reference meter. According to this measurement, the exact value is defined as 299,792,458 meters per second. We can say that this is the highest possible speed in the universe, but can we reach it? Hubble. In theory, to reach the speed of light, our aircraft should be massless. The paradox is that you don't have to physically exist such an acceleration. The speed of light may seem enormous, but taking into account the distance between space objects, it is no longer so impressive. Moreover, it seems quite modest compared with human ambitions to travel fast from one point of the universe to another. Of course, light can circle the Earth 7.5 times in one second, but it also has limits, for example, when talking to a person who is one meter away from you. The latency of what you see is 3.3 nanoseconds. In general, nothing in the universe appears before us in the present time or now. Let's try to start with familiar objects, such as the Moon. The natural satellite of our planet is 380,000 kilometers away from its surface. That means that from Earth we see the Moon as it was 1.3 seconds ago. The latency for the Sun is 8 minutes, and for Mars it makes 14 minutes. We can conclude that it takes almost 14 minutes for the rovers to do the simplest movement, because they are controlled directly from the Earth. It turns out that the speed of light is a kind of border for any other speed, such as radio, micro and gamma waves. Let's try to go even further. The closest star system to Earth is the Alpha Centauri system, which is 4.3 light years away. There are three stars in the system, and the smallest one, Proxima Centauri, is the closest one, 4.2 light years from the Sun. A planet which is the size of the Earth is orbiting Proxima Centauri. Let's imagine that it is inhabited by intelligent life forms that are interested in space exploration like humans. So aliens will be able to see the four years old picture of the Earth. If their telescope can show every person on Earth, then they can see you four years younger than you are in the moment of observation. The center of the Milky Way is located 25,000 light years away from the Sun which means that we see it as it was 25,000 years ago. Let's zoom in. Imagine that there's a planet with intelligent inhabitants which is located 2,000 light years away from us. To observe the Earth, they'll need a telescope with a diameter of several hundred thousand kilometers. All of us have seen pictures and videos of the dark, night side of the Earth, and all of us remember perfectly well the scattering of the luminous points of our cities. But 2,000 years ago there were no megacities, centuries would have to pass before the invention of artificial light. If they would like to see people on our planet, they would need a telescope of approximately 11 billion kilometers in diameter, which is a distance from the Sun to Neptune. Let's imagine that our mysterious neighbors do have such technologies. They will see ancient Rome and other civilizations of that distant time. In 1 AD, Rome had a population of 800,000 to 1 million inhabitants and was the largest and most powerful city in our world. Most of what we know about the civilization of this ancient era was recorded during Roman rule. The population of the Earth was about 231 million people. 
The most inhabited areas of the planet were communities founded around the rivers Ganges, Tigris, Yangtze, Nile and Po. Would you like more of it? Our nearest galaxy is Andromeda. It is much larger than Milky Way and is believed to eventually collide with it. Andromeda lies in the distance of 2,500,000 light years from the Sun. We can observe it as it was 2.5 million years ago. An alien observer from there having a telescope with a colossal 15 trillion kilometers diameter won't see any intelligent life on the Earth at all. A human being is just emerging as Homo sapiens. He learns to use the tools and is hardly aware of the great path ahead. It's worth mentioning that extraterrestrials will be able to see not only the Earth in the past, but the entire Milky Way galaxy 2.5 million years ago. The scale is breathtaking, but what if we move even deeper? The largest spiral galaxy NGC 6872 is located 212 million light years away from our solar system. The diameter of the telescope should be truly fantastic about 1 quadrillion kilometers, or 132 light years. What will the alien observers see this time? First of all, they won't see the outlines of the continents that are familiar to all of us. Instead, they will see only the supercontinent Pangaea, which much later was split up by the Tethys Ocean into Laurasia and Gondwana. Both supercontinents will later split up into smaller parts and their collisions will lead to active mountain building. Africa's pressure on Europe will result in building the Alps and the clash between India and Asia will create the Himalayas. Secondly, most of the inhabitants of the Earth the aliens will be able to see are considered extinct a long time ago. The Jurassic period is the dawn of the forests. Abundant rainfalls contributed to the spread of flora not only in the ocean, but also on the surface. There were mainly real ferns and gymnosperms in the dense forests. The class of gymnosperm cycads has survived till the present day. These days the Jurassic flora grows in humid equatorial forests. The farther away the observers are, the deeper they have to look in our planet's past. As you understand, the same rule applies to us in case we want to watch them. Voyager 1, a spacecraft with a golden phonograph record on board with a message for alien life, will help us to understand the colossal nature of all these scales. It contains greetings in 55 languages, people's voices, classical music and sounds of nature, photographs of people and the Earth. The gold-plated copper disk contains the coordinates of Earth and the solar system, as well as the radiation pattern of the hydrogen atom. In September 2013, NASA announced that Voyager 1 has crossed the border of the solar system. It was the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space. Today, the spacecraft is at the distance of more than 20 billion kilometers from the Earth. The calculations of the scientists say that the fuel should be enough for another 10 years of work and after that, the ship will lose connection with the Earth. Let's imagine that there's enough fuel for an infinite period and Voyager 1 is heading straight for Proxima Centauri. This path will take 40,000 years, given that the spacecraft doesn't move at the speed of light, but only at the speed of 17 km per second, or 60,000 km per hour. The sheer scale of the cosmos is hard to imagine, and although the darkness of the unknown space can be rather frightening, humanity should fearlessly seek ways to accelerate the spacecraft if we link our future to the exploration of other worlds. When a human meets the cosmic immensity, he understands how little he knows about the world around him, how much unknown is in this world, which has yet to be discovered. Why do the laws of the universe work this way and not another? Why does the very fact that we have sense organs seem like a mockery of the distances in space? Of course you can live without thinking about all this stuff, the world becomes clear. But when we think about the incredible phenomena happening around us and far beyond the Earth, the usual walls of understanding are falling and we step beyond the ordinary. 
Thanks for watching. We hope you liked this video. Take a moment to hit thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet. Good luck, Starwalkers, and have a pleasant journey in the vast spaces of your fantasy.